it's incredibly brave of you to, um, you know, to, to speak out. And, and, and can I just ask you what it was like to be sat in that room, just feet across mm. from President Trump uh, in that situation? What, what was that like for you? Well, it was an honor, truthfully, even though I'm not a Trump supporter or a fan of the way the government's being ran by right, right now. And it was an honor to meet the president, the vice, vice president, the madam secretary, but I'm still in a position where I feel the need to fight, mm. and I'm not going to stop. What did you make of what he had to say, his suggestion that teachers should be armed? I thought it was absurd. I thought it just didn't make any sense to me why uh, guns are being brought into our school and people are dying and he wants to bring more guns into the school. And teachers go to school to teach, to mentor, to love the children. Why should they have to be faced with the responsibility of thinking if they're going to have to kill a kid that day or not? What happens when a teacher and a student get into an argument and the teacher feels the student took it too hard and the next day the student comes into class, reaches for a pencil, and the teacher feels the need to act first? You know, that's happened with a... Uh, that's happened a fair amount over here with mm. law enforcement. Yeah. You know, people are scared. They don't know what the other person has and they act first and they act wrong. And, and I don't see if uh, I don't see why if a law officer can do that, why a teacher wouldn't do that. Um, and uh, there uh, was a person, wasn't yes. there, with a weapon on the site? There was the deputy sheriff, um, which sort of flies That's in the right. face of having someone armed there would have saved the day. However, there's been direct criticism of him, and he's now resigned. And uh, the county sheriff. Uh, his boss, if you like, Scott Israel, has been very critical of the way he behaved. The only thing that I could say to myself was that he could have stopped it. He could have stopped it. He was standing on the first floor, the first of three floors that that person went to. And he could see him. I am friends with a witness who saw him and the shooter on the same floor, and he didn't stop them. And he can say resigned all he wants. I think that was the easy way out for him, and I'm not surprised he took it, because he is a coward. Well, and there may well be some prosecution, and he may have a defence which he hasn't given yet. Um, but, Sam, can I just ask you, I mean, um, you know, your brother was on a, a different floor of the school. Um, we saw some of the text messages that you'd sent, and, you know, when you'd put in capital letters, don't do anything. It makes my blood run cold. Mm. Um, if you don't mind, are you able to just tell us what you were thinking and feeling about your brother at the time? And, of course, then your, your own best friend, I'm afraid, lost his life, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did. Well, I... I thought I was never going to see my brother again. And that could have gone a number of ways. That could have meant... I wasn't going to make it out. Could have meant he wasn't going to make it out. I didn't... I really didn't know. We were waiting in that room for about an hour, and it felt like a week. Mm. I felt like I was waiting to die, and I felt... My brother, he was alone. There's 20 to 30, 14-year-old kids in a room with their teacher dead in the doorway, and somebody right outside walking around with a murder machine. And your instinctive reaction must have been, I want to go and save him, and I'm sure his was for you, but you kept a very cool head and said, keep still and keep quiet, which may well have, have saved both of your lives. Yes, and in reality, I did want to go and help him. I wanted to go and be for them, but you have to be smart and you know, I think uh, part of the reason that he's still alive is because the shooter suspected that uh, Mr. Beagle was just going back into an empty classroom. And if I had brought the attention to that classroom or myself, I don't think, I, I don't think he or I would have made it out. Well, Sam, it is, um, you know, we are massively impressed 
watching from this side mm. how you and all your fellow students have rallied together and it feels that this is a seismic moment. Is that how it feels to you, that through the pain, you won't oh, stop yeah. until you get change? Is that how it genuinely feels? Yes. I, I really think we're going to change the world. And, you know, when I say the world, I think it, it means uh, the way the world views us as well, because we need to start with the United States. I highly admire the gun policies and regulations you have over there. Mm. Where's next on your fight? What's the next goal? You've met the president, you still say the fight needs to go on. What next? Well, we met the president and uh, 24 hours later, nothing has changed. So we were lucky enough to start at the top of the, the, the branch, the legislative branch, mm. but since that's not working right now. We're going to go towards the, ju the judiciary and work our way to the top. OK, Sam, well, um, wonderful to talk to you, you know, unfortunately, you have to be a lot older than your 18 years. Yeah. You know, that maturity comes across. Um, so thank you very much for talking to them. We're really sorry you lost your friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that you find some time to grieve and to uh, get better in your own my way. Um, thank you very I? much for speaking to us. You know, Fascinating. A, a kind thank of... you, and I'd like to thank you for the donation in Joaquin's name. OK, well, it, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time.